In this video, we're continuing on with our literal equations worksheet under the Algebra 1 tab on the CUDA software website. I'll leave a link in the description box below so you know how to access this website. We're solving each equation for the indicated variable. So in number 11, our indicated variable is a. So in order to solve for that, we need to isolate the a. That can be done by dividing by m. When we divide by m, the m's on the left hand side will cancel out since m divided by m is 1 and a times 1 is a and that's going to be equal to n plus p all over m. In number 12, again we're isolating the a, so our first step will be to multiply by b. When we multiply both sides by b, we'll get b u equal to a times k since b divided by b is 1. Now our last step is going to be to divide by k to get bu over k equal to a since k divided by k is 1. However, we're going to flip this around so that a is on the left side of the equation. So it's going to be a equal to bu divided by k. And remember the order in which you multiply doesn't matter so you can say b times u, or you can say u times b. They're both the same. In number 13, again, we're solving for the variable a. This can be done simply by adding c to both sides. When we do that, negative c plus a positive c is 0, so a plus 0 is a, and that's going to be equal to d minus r plus C. And the order in which you add doesn't matter either, so you could say C plus D minus R, you could say negative R plus C plus D, or you could say D plus C minus R. Any of those ways is correct. In number 14, this time we're solving for the variable X, so we need to isolate X. This can be done by simply dividing both sides by M m divided by m is 1, x times 1 is x, and then we'll have n, p, all over m. On to the second page, number 15, we're solving for a. We need to do this first by moving the b to the other side of the equation. When we subtract both sides by b, we'll have z minus b equals 0 plus m over a, which is m over a. Then what we need to do is multiply both sides by a to get a out from the denominator. So we'll have a times z minus b on the left hand side and that's going to be equal to m on the right. Except we're solving for a not m. So now we're going to have to divide by the quantity z minus b. When we divide by z minus b, z minus b divided by z minus b is 1. So we're going to be left with a on the left hand side since a times 1 is a. And that's going to equal m all over z minus b. And remember the fraction bar separates the numerator and denominator with parentheses. So we no longer need the parentheses in our final answer. In number 16, we're solving for x. Let's do this by moving x to the other side at the start. So we'll have negative x plus g equal to negative c plus y. Then subtract g from both sides. When we do that, we'll have negative x equal to negative c plus y plus a negative g. However, we do not want this x to be negative. We want it to be 1x, not negative 1 times x, so we're going to multiply everything by a negative 1. Negative 1 times negative x is going to be a positive x, and we're going to have to distribute this negative 1 to the negative c, the positive y, and the negative g. So now negative c, or the opposite of c, times negative 1 becomes a positive c, y becomes negative y, and g also has its sign switched to become a positive g. So x 
equals c plus negative y plus g. Again, you can rewrite this in many ways, one way being x equals g plus c minus y. And number 17, g equals b minus c times a. And we're solving for a. So first, we have to move this b to the other side. We're going to do this first because if we were to divide by c at the very start, we would have multiple fractions and it might get a little messy. That way we'll be left with negative c a, and then we can then, from there, isolate that a. So we'll have g minus b equal to negative c a. Divide both sides by a negative c, and we'll move the negative to the numerator. So we'll have negative g minus b all over c equal to a positive a, since the negative was canceled out when we divided by a negative c. When you move the negative to the numerator, you're applying it to all terms within the numerator. So this negative gets distributed to the g and the b. So this will be negative g and then negative times a negative b would be a positive b all over c equals a. And I'm just going to rearrange this and put a on the left hand side and say that's equal to negative g plus b all over c. Again, with addition, order doesn't matter, so you could also say b minus g, or b plus a negative g all over c. And number 18, g equals c times a minus b, and again, we're solving for that a. We're going to start by adding b to both sides, just like in the last problem, so we'll have g plus b equal to c times a. Then we'll divide by c to isolate that a, to get that g plus b all over c equals a. If you want to rewrite this with the a on the left hand side of the equation, you can say a equals g plus b all over c. Remembering again that the order of addition doesn't matter, so you could also say b plus g all over c. And number 19, we're solving for x. In order to do that, we need the terms with the x's on the same side of the equation. So I'm going to move 2x to the other side. We'll have 4 equal to negative 2x plus xg. Once we're there, we'll be able to pull out an x from each of these terms. So we can say 4 equals x times negative 2 plus g. Since if we were to distribute that x, it would be negative 2x plus xg. So we basically just reverse the distribution to pull that x out. Now remember we're isolating that x, so we're going to divide by negative 2 plus g. This will leave us with 4 over negative 2 plus g equals x. Another way we could write this, we can go ahead and flip the equation to say x equals 4 over negative 2 plus g. And the way on the answer sheet it's written is they actually multiply by negative over negative. So they do negative 4 all over the opposite of negative 2 plus g, since this is the same as 4 over negative 2 plus g. So it'll be x equal to negative 4 all over 2 minus g. And lastly, number 20. g equals 1 plus 2a all over a, and we're solving for a. I'm going to start by multiplying both sides by a. When I do that, I'll have g times a equal to 1 plus 2a, since the a in the denominator cancels out with the a that I multiplied by. Then I'm going to subtract 2a from both sides to get my a's on the same side of the equation. So g a minus 2 a equals 1. Once I do that, I'll be able to pull out an a, so kind of like reverse distribution. I'm going to pull out an a and say that a times the quantity g minus 2 equals 1. So if you can see, if I distributed the a, it would be a times g, so g a minus 2 times a. So now in order to solve for a, all I have to do is divide by that g minus 2. g 
g minus 2 cancels out with g minus 2, and I'll have a equal to 1 over g minus 2 as the solution for number 20. As always, likes and subscriptions are greatly appreciated, so go ahead, click the like button, and also subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below and continue on to the next video where I'll finish out the literal equations worksheet.